This video will discuss question 27. Ignoring stability properties, consider the four circuits in figure 4 and compare their corner negative 3 dB frequencies. Please ignore CL. In other words, CL is 0 picofarads. And after that, we get 8 options of orderings between these four frequencies. This is figure 4. It shows four times the identical two-stage op-amp circuits with different configurations for the compensation capacitor. The question asks us to analyze the negative 3 dB frequencies of all four circuits. And in this case, the 3 dB frequencies is often a shorthand for the first pole frequency because this typically is the lower value. The first pole frequency is nothing more than the inverse of the time constant of the output of the first stage. And that's the same as 1 over our equivalence at the output of stage 1 times the capacitance at the output of stage 1, at least the equivalent capacitance at the output of stage 1. Among all four options, the output resistance of the first stage is going to remain the same as the output resistance of MP2 in parallel with the output resistance of MN2. The equivalent capacitance will change between the options, so we're going to analyze that. This equivalent capacitance can be written as follows. It is the compensation capacitance multiplied by a factor caused by the Miller effect. And that Miller effect is 1 plus A numerically. So a signal that enters the capacitor at the output of stage 1 will have a voltage swing that is A times as large at the other end of the capacitor. This voltage swing indeed does change between the four circuits and it changes as follows. First of all, for circuit 3, the Miller effect does not really apply because the capacitor is already grounded. It is not connected between two ends of an amplifier and that means that there is no gain in the voltage swing between both ends. So this will have the lowest possible capacitance. That implies that the 3 v frequency of circuit 3 will always be the largest. For circuit 1, 2 and 4 we should have a close look at the voltage swing at the right hand side of our capacitor. In circuit 1 the compensation capacitor is directly connected to the node where we measure V out, which is above the source follower and a CAS code. The CAS code increases the overall gain of our source follower by a factor of its intrinsic gain. From that we can conclude that unlike for circuit 2 and 4, the voltage swing at the output of circuit 1 will be the largest. That implies that the equivalent capacitance will be largest and as a result that the 3B frequency of circuit 1 will be the smallest. The difference between circuit 2 and 4 is more subtle because we now have to analyze what the difference is in the intrinsic gain of this peak MOS transistor and this NMOS transistor. The gain at the middle node above or below a capacitor is weakened by the intrinsic gain of the CAS code. The voltage swing at this node or at this node is weakened by the intrinsic gain of our CAS code. The voltage swing before a cascode is the same as the voltage swing at the output of a cascode divided by the intrinsic gain of the cascode. So in other words, the equivalent capacitance for circuit 2 and circuit 4 will be the same as 1 plus A at the output over the intrinsic gain of our cascode. The intrinsic gain of these CAS codes can be computed as follows. For P5, that is the same as GMP times its internal output resistance. And that is 1 milliamp per volt times 20 kilo ohms. So we will see an intrinsic gain of 20. And for the transistor N5, we will have an intrinsic gain of GMN times RON5, which is 5 milliamp per volt times 5 kilo ohms. So we will see an intrinsic gain of 25. That means that for circuit 2, the gain at the output is weakened by a factor of 20 at this node. And for circuit 4, the gain at the output is weakened by a factor of 25 at this node. So the larger this gain is, the smaller your equivalent capacitance will be, and as a result, the larger your 3 dB frequency will be. So from that we may conclude that the 3 dB frequency 
of circuit 2 is smaller than the 3B frequency of circuit 4. And we found earlier that the 3B frequency of uh, circuit 1 it has to be the smallest and the 3B frequency of circuit 3 has to be the largest. So that is the correct ordering.